My next guest, a very well-respected MIT scientist, recently gave a presentation warning of the possible long-term side effects of the COVID vaccines. She wrote, through the prion-like action of the spike protein, we will likely see an alarming increase in several major neurodegenerative diseases with increasing prevalence among younger and younger populations. Joining me now is Dr. Stephanie Senna, Senior Research Scientist at the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab. Dr. Senef, um, this is absolutely terrifying to a layperson to hear, uh, as this push for vaccines and boosters and, and new boosters and multiple boosters for our younger population continue. What do we need to know? I first of all think it's outrageous to be giving vaccines to young people because they they don't have a risk of a very very low risk of dying from COVID, so they they don't get a benefit. And when you look at the potential harm from these vaccines, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. And certainly, repeated boosters is just going to be very uh, devastating, I think, in the long term. And um, it's just a uh, I've done a lot of research, and I I really am beginning to understand exactly how the process takes place and it's uh, very disturbing. Now the neurodegenerative aspect of this that you specifically highlight from your research, explain that if you can in layman's terms. Yes, I'll try to. And of course the science is never easy, but it's quite fascinating what happens. The, the vaccine gets injected into the arm, the muscle cells get very upset. They bring in a whole bunch of troops. The immune cells come in, take up the vaccine themselves. They take up the nanoparticles. They start making spike protein. The particles basically get your cells to produce lots and lots of spike protein in a hurry. Spike is the most toxic part of the virus. And these immune cells then rush into the lymph system, rush to the spleen. Many of them end up in the spleen, which is where you want uh, them to be to produce the antibodies. That's the goal. So they've designed it. And they're very happy to see that they end up in the spleen making lots of spike protein and then in invoking an immune response that produces antibodies by the B cells. But the problem is that those germinal centers in the spleen are really the center place where Parkinson's disease develops and probably many other uh, neurodegenerative diseases. But for Parkinson's, it's been very well laid out that, uh, that you get uh, prion-like proteins even from infections in the gut. Immune cells take them to the spleen, to those germinal centers, and then they start spewing out exosomes. These are little lipid particles that are released by the cell, unloading mm -hmm. that toxic protein and shipping it along the vagus nerve to the brain. This is sort of well known with respect to Parkinson's disease, and that's the model I'm using. It feels to me like this is a perfect setup for it. Dr. Because Dr. Sanaf, um, this is a very short segment. We're going to have you back, but... Any parent who's been pressured into giving a child uh, this vac vaccination, what do you say to them tonight? Uh, they should do everything they can to avoid it, absolutely everything they can. Dr. Sanef, um, this deserves a longer conversation that you and I are going to have on my podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us, and I'll continue to post uh, your research and your findings. Up next, Joe.